Okay, so this video so, this video is going to cover as many different shoulder dislocation reduction techniques as possible here. Okay, mm -hmm. and so let's go for it. So you can have an assistant for doing a uh, prone technique for uh, scapular manipulation. You can have an assistant just apply gentle, gentle anterior traction with them in the prone position. Again, same thing. You can come in and you get your thumb into position on the uh, acromium and on the uh, uh, scapular wing and you're going to rotate me uh, with the scapular wing going medially. Okay. Uh, So with the spazzer technique, you're going to have them lay flat on their back. You're going to take them into uh, vertical uh, traction or anterior traction to the body and you're going to do external rotation. So you're going to basically uh, externally rotate the arm or uh, supinate the hand and you're going to continue that traction. You can also put a little bit of pressure on the chest, but you're unable to do uh, scapular manipulation with that technique. This one I, I'm not as familiar with. You said you've done this in the past. It's, this is my go-to. Okay, so again, they're in that same position holding themselves at uh, not full internal rotation. Uh, they're going to have their arm in this position. So uh, the technique that's in the books is uh, keeping the elbow adducted. You're going to allow it to externally rotate. You're supporting the arm, and that's to give them the sense that they're not just going to flop right out. It helps them relax, and you're just going to bring it out into external rotation, and this should reduce the shoulder. Um, I find in my own experience you have to almost do exaggerated external rotation, and then sometimes I don't even feel it going in, I don't feel it pop, but then when I bring it back, then, then the it, it, the yeah, it goes all the way back down. Now so. you had talked also about padding on the inside to help right. with uh, a little bit of uh, lateral distraction. Right. So you pat on the inside, a little lateral distraction, the same rotation. Right. Now the, the, it's not uncommon for me to go ahead and put in 20 cc's of uh, lidocaine into the joint in addition prior to this and give it a, a few minutes for it to uh, be absorbed okay. for pain control. Uh, so with the Milch technique, again, we're starting with the external rotation. We take them out to full external rotation. We don't get any reduction from there. I'm not even sure how to do that. <laughs> from there. You're going to take them into full um, adduction, keeping them externally rotated. Ab abduction. Yeah, a abduction. Um, and you're going to uh, take them into overhead extension, and you're going to apply gentle traction on the humerus with uh, direct pressure over the humeral head. All right. So lay down flat. Okay. So with counter, traction, counter traction, so you're going to come up high in the shoulder, and it's just like it sounds. So he's going to be pulling traction going uh, in direction against my traction. I'll be basically you're going to keep her from moving, okay. and I'm just going to lean back. And so all I'm doing, the key to this is gentle traction. Now, one thing you will see a lot of people, and I've seen people do this, is they'll start trying to reef on it because this is kind of a, an aggressive approach in general. All it is is gentle traction because what you want to overcome are, are the four muscles that are in the rotator cuff. And if you just keep that constant tension, that's gonna, they're eventually going to relax on their own. So it's not the amount of force, it's the gradual traction that's applied. Okay. okay. So this is a, the Ferry's technique. Uh, for anterior shoulder dislocation reduction. So you're going to have the patient lay with their arm complete to, completely to their side and again they're going to want to try and keep it preferentially up but you just kind of gradually coax them into this position right here. You're going to apply distal traction. You're going to start manipulating the shoulder coming into abduction going up and down in a 10 degree arc that up and down motion is intended to relax the rotator cuff muscles. Now, if you don't have an 
an obvious reduction of the, the joint at 90 degrees, you okay? <laughs> if you don't have an obvious reduction at 90 degrees, you can at that point externally rotate the arm and continue and that should reduce the shoulder. The Cunningham technique for reducing the shoulder. Uh, so it helps get down in line with the patient. Have the patient go ahead and rest their palm, grab your shoulder. Now again, getting them into this position, yeah. not getting my face in there. No. Nope. <laughs> uh, getting them into this position is key because they're going to be really tense about it. Uh, so you're going to rest your arm in the crease of their elbow and they're going to hold on and that's going to create a little bit of gentle distal traction. You're just going to massage the bicep. Okay. All right. Well, now you they, want... They also straighten up their shoulders. I was, I was getting there, sir. Okay. I was getting there. You could just hop in. Am I, am I, am I narrating this or are you? <laughs> uh, anyway, they're going to sit upright and they're going to take their shoulder blades back and keep their back well, let's sit straight. Let's upright then. <laughs> All right. All right. So at this point, I'm going to just be massaging. She's going to try and keep her posture as uh, in line as possible, which helps keep the uh, uh, scapula in an uh, uh, advantageous position for reduction. And you just want to make sure that you're rubbing on the uh, um, areas in, involving the rotator cuff. So uh, supraspinatus and infraspinatus regions and a little bit on the anterior shoulder. And they should reduce. Okay, so the biceps, deltoid, and all that stuff gets massaged. Yes, sir. Got it. <laughs> so Stimson technique for anterior shoulder dislocation reduction. Uh, you have the patient in the prone position with their arm... Uh, uh, extended in front of them. The uh, hardest part is to get them into this position uh, in a relaxed fashion to where they don't tense up. You need to go ahead and place, uh, place a harness on. This one has an inflatable cuff uh, to help secure it to the forearm. Just go ahead and verify that they actually have a distal pulse before you go apply the bag. All you're going to do is a uh, bag of about 10 to 15 pounds traction or 10, 10 to 15 pound weight bag and it's going to apply gentle traction. Your key thing, you want to make sure that the bag actually hangs off the floor and you have enough distance for it to, to go. Now a variant on this would be the, again, you could do the prone technique of scapular manipulation along with the Stimson technique, which would just then make it the prone technique again. So identify the acromion, scapular wing, translate the uh, inferior scapular wing medially, and you should get a reduction. Go ahead and lay flat. Uh, so, the counter traction for uh, inferior dislocation, so the patient's going to generally present with their arm in the uh, uh, fully adducted, or abducted, abducted position, uh, arm above their head, uh, inability to mobilize uh, the joint. Uh, so you're going to drop the sheet, lift your head a bit, and drop the sheet under their body. Your assistant's going to go ahead and do counter traction. What you're going to do is grab and control the arm and distract the, the humerus, pulling it back into alignment and in line with the glenoid, and it should reduce. So this is a reduction of posterior dislocation. Uh, oftentimes patients will present with their belly or their hand flat against their belly. So uh, Essentially, it's going to start a lot like traction counter traction um, with the anterior technique, except for in this instance, um, we will stay anterior. We're going to go ahead with the external rotation. So we're going to externally rotate and draw them anteriorly, continuing the external rotation. Another method you can add to it with the external rotation, grab the humeral head and attempt to guide it anteriorly along with that traction. You can also place a sheet up in the axe pocket to help draw if you're unable to get the angle on it to apply the force. Mm -hmm.